Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at a driving test route round Colic. Now on this occasion, we're not actually doing a mock test, I'm just getting the pupil to drive around following SatNav, so an independent driving lesson. Um, but there's a few really good teaching points on this video, so well worth a watch. We're starting off just opposite the test centre, so we're coming up to the roundabout turn in the left here, first exit. The test centre would be down on the right there. That's where you'd come from when you start your test. So coming across here, we're going up to the traffic lights turning left. You can see the pupils lined up in the left-hand lane nice and early for that. Whichever way you're going here, you want to get in that lane nice and early. Get your mirrors and signal covered and get yourself right up to those lights like the pupil here has. We're going to be turning left and then we're going to be turning right at the next traffic light. And this is an important part to know for planning. So if your intention is to turn left and then right, we want to line up on the right as we make the left turn. So you watch the pupils line up through here, he'll turn left and almost straight away he's over into that right hand lane. This is because nobody can be on his right as he pulls out of there. Everyone in that second lane will be turning right. This is much, much simpler than turning left into lane one, then trying to change lane as the car behind moves into lane two to overtake you. So the pupil's gone into the filter lane here, really nicely lined up for the junction and a really steady approach for the traffic lights. Absolutely perfect approach, and he's getting quite close to that stop line, which is brilliant. We don't want to be too far back from that stop line. Equally, we don't want to get too close or even sit with our front end over that line, so make sure you're just shy of those lines. Notice how the lines are staggered at this junction. That's to remind you, or make you more aware, that the lights work separately. So you can see here the cars on the left of us are making progress through the green lights. Their arrows saying left and straight are okay, while our light remains red for a little longer. Once our light comes on, we've got a green filter arrow, so the pupil can make his way straight across the junction. You can see all the vehicles on the other side waiting there because they're on a red light. As we turn, we're coming into a 30 zone. Now, the sat-nav here will tell you there is a right turn. There's no right turn. If you watch the markings, we're just going to follow the road around the bend. And it does it a little bit further up on my sat-nav as well. So be very careful that sat-nav can give you misleading instructions. And the road markings, of course, should always take priority over what the sat-nav says. Coming up here, we're going to go across the railway bridge, and it does get a little narrow, a little bendy, and then it drops downhill on the other side. So you want to make sure your speed is in check as you do this, particularly if there's buses or large vehicles coming the other way, and especially coming down the hill here. As you come around the bend, there are almost always parked cars. So you can see the pupil keeping his speed 25, and he's just taking his time coming down the hill. This decision, I did say, was a bit questionable at the time. The gap is a little bit tight in my opinion. So in this situation, I would wait rather than pulling out and forcing the red car to wait for us. The same here, the pupil makes a better decision here just to tuck in and let the other cars pass before he moves out around the van. So this is what he should have done with the red car. And that's what we should aim to do if we're ever not sure about the gap. If you cannot definitely clear that gap, be defensive. We've got a zebra crossing and then a mini roundabout. And at the mini roundabout, we can only go left. You can see on the right, the no entry signs there. We've still got to give way to cars from the right. And we've got to be mindful of that crossing on the left as well as we pull out. It's very easy to focus on the right hand side for too long. And then as we pull out and look up, there's someone at the crossing. Notice the child over there on the right as we pulled out. That could cause us a problem if they went for the crossing and the pupil didn't spot them, particularly with them being shorter than the railings there, bless them. Up ahead, another crossing, just scanning around with these crossings, make sure nobody's walking up, um, make sure that nobody's got the intention to cross before you commit to that crossing. Whenever you come across the railway crossings, just make sure the other side's clear, you don't want to get caught in that yellow box area. And keep an eye on the cars beyond the one just in front to help you with that. So you can see two, three cars ahead. There's a lot of space between them. We've got another crossing. You can see the left side's a little obscured. So lowered speed, watch your mirrors and be ready for people on that left-hand side there as well.
up ahead there are a few more park cars we do have to adjust our speed based on what we can see you can see the lorry there squeezing through so that gives us a good indication we're going to have space because we're not as wide as that lorry the lorry indicating is going to cause that knock on effect now because he's slowing to turn so we've got to be aware of that and just keeping a good space like this learner did here and again we've got a warning for a crossing up ahead so we're looking ahead for that crossing and anyone who might intend to use it notice the cyclist up ahead on the left as well so we've got to consider our approach to that cyclist now our decision to overtake is going to be affected by whatever we're doing next so at the traffic lights we'll be turning left that means to get round this cyclist we'd have to get round and then cut in front of him and that wouldn't be reasonable to do so the pupil makes a really good decision just hanging back behind the cyclist and keeping a really good following space behind that cyclist while he's making his way up to that stop line. Again, you can see the pupils left a nice little bit of space between us and that cyclist. We don't want to get right up the back of him. That could be quite intimidating for him and quite uncomfortable. As we come round, we've got room to pass so the pupils taking that opportunity to get around the cyclist, watching your left mirror as you come past and making sure you move in with plenty of room is what you want to do there as well. We don't just want to lean in without looking because we may not be clear of the cyclist. So make sure you're clear, check your mirrors and get in smoothly. We're going to be taking a left turn just up ahead. So again, you can see the pupil lowering his speed in good time for the turn. Can't really see what's going on around there. So he's making sure he's got time to react to whatever's going on. Notice the 20 sign on the left there. So we're coming into a 20 mile an hour zone. This road does feel like it should be 30 and often people will try and push you to do 30 by tailgating you. Um, cars coming the other way will often be doing 30. So really watch your own speed here. You can see the pupil keeping his speed under 20 quite well on this road. So watch out for those speed limits and make sure that you're doing what's correct even if other people are trying to encourage you not to. just up ahead we're going to be taking a left turn and it is a very very sharp turn so look at how slowly the learner comes into this you see what i mean about how sharp this is it's really important to be slow around corners like this and to look over to your left hand side as you're making the turn don't just stare at the front of the car when you're making turns like this look into that new road and try and see what's coming the other way and what you've got to deal with next always look ahead of yourself because it's going to help with your planning your ability to respond to what's coming up next rather than looking at the front of the car worrying about where you want the front wheels to be loads of parked cars down here so you can see the pupils traveling at a nice low speed giving himself plenty of time to react if something does come the other way he'll be looking for gaps on either side where he can pass traffic particularly as he comes up to this bend he's really really conscious of his positioning and moves right over to the curb before taking that bend so making sure you're tucked in and out the way is going to help you respond if someone does appear coming the other way because you've got less work to do coming around in the middle of the road you're in a very vulnerable position and you've got to actively move out of the way so you're just reducing that workload in advance of the problem end of the road we're turning right you might have just spotted the 30 mile an hour sign there so once we come out onto this road we can get our speed up a little bit more provided the road's safe and clear Up ahead, you're going to see a bus parked up on the left, and this is something you may come across on your driving test, of course, or just while you're out and about afterwards. You can see the pupil being a little cautious as you approach the bus, but then as soon as he sees a safe gap and that the bus isn't going to pull out, off he goes, and that's exactly what we want to be doing. Approach it with that readiness to stop, but look for your opportunity to get around it if you get one, get on with it. 
and use those mirrors before you pull out as well because you never know what the car behind might be doing if you're not aware of a car behind and they're overtaking you that's going to escalate into a really really risky situation so use those mirrors frequently and that's just going to help keep you safe as you carry on We've got a few speed ramps here so you notice the pupil lowering his speed for each of those ramps letting the car roll over it is going to keep it as smooth as possible and then accelerating after it we've then got some roadworks up ahead so again we want to see that speed coming down watching those lights and being ready to stop before the red sign if we need to before committing and carrying on another zebra crossing so you'll be expected to look for those sides for anyone approaching it and another speed ramp so bringing that speed down letting the car roll over the ramp and then accelerating away if it's safe as well. When it comes to large vehicles in spaces like this, just be really mindful of your mirrors and how much clearance you've got. You may need to slow down more just to allow them a bit of space. We had plenty on that occasion. The pupil was on his mirrors to account for that. So cover those mirrors and adapt your speed if you're not sure. Another zebra crossing. And just after that, we've got a roundabout where we'll be turning right. As we come up to the roundabout, of course, you'll be expected to look for traffic coming from the right. You'll see the SUV on the right turning towards us there. We're going where that lorry's headed. So we want to make sure we're clear and then keep rolling. As you enter the roundabout, do not give way to people coming from your left. Unless they pull out on you, you've got no reason to give to them. And make sure you give a left signal before you leave. So people coming down towards the roundabout know you're going to pull away really nice job there by the pupil really smooth as he went through you can see him picking up his speed up the hill as we get away from that roundabout keeping up with the lorry now this lorry is going to play an important part in my pupil's thought process up ahead which is i think really really important thing to highlight so my advice when you're dealing with large vehicles especially on multi-lane roads is never put yourself alongside them particularly when you're coming up to a bend or a corner and that is exactly what the pupil does here we're going to be turning right at the traffic lights and if we moved right up in the queue would be alongside that lorry now the pupil holds back just behind the back wheels of the lorry and his plan is to let the lorry go before he goes so he's sitting behind the lorry as we make our way across the junction and that's absolutely spot on because if the lorry turns left that back end's going to swing out towards us and if he goes straight the potential is he's going to cut the corner as he goes across the junction so we don't want to be next to that back end as he does that because the back end is where that movement's going to be the most exaggerated while he sat here the pupil commented that he was thinking about moving up he started to question that decision don't question your decisions trust yourself because often that's what's going to cost you on your test you'll make a decision and then when you're sitting there thinking about it you'll talk yourself out of that correct decision do what feels right do what's instinctive and trust yourself and that is going to give you the best chance of passing your test and if it results in you not passing your test then at least the faults that you've made are down to genuine problems with your ability to drive they're not down to talking yourself out of what you'd normally do and making a stupid mistake which is a real kick in the teeth if you fail your test for something like that
just up ahead we're coming into Carlton High Street so high streets of course you're going to have more activity you're going to have more crossings you're going to have more pedestrians so the advice here would be to lower your speed cover your mirrors more particularly where you've got parked cars on the side like this you want to give them a little bit of room where you can't you want to lower the speed so watching those crossings as you go through as well watching for cars pulling out and pulling over watching for cars coming up the side road you see the pupils sitting around about 20 mile an hour here which is brilliant for a high street we've got the parked car on the left we've got the van sat on the driveway there we've got the bus coming the other way so all of that information it's a lot to process and if we're going through there quickly we're going to have to process that information very quickly and that increases the stress levels that you're going to experience especially when you're on your test being watched by the examiner in busy situations like that lower your speed and give yourself more thinking time and it makes everything 10 times easier notice the lorry parked up on the left ahead so another chance to demonstrate your awareness by covering those mirrors looking ahead at what's coming the other way and just making a confident decision as to whether to pass that lorry or to wait behind it we're going to be turning left in a moment and these side roads are very very tight so the aim is we want to be slowing down really well and getting that speed really low before you bring the nose of the car in we don't know what's in that road there could be something coming the other way see the red car and how it narrows the street and this is exactly why we don't want to rush into those side roads if the pupil came in fast we wouldn't have a chance to respond to that ambulance and that would result in a very very bad situation for us particularly on our test so low speed and very cautious on narrow corners like that coming over the hill as well the view is quite poor so you can see the pupil held back a little bit just took his time getting through that gap and now we've got a good view of what's ahead you can pick up your speed a little bit more this is a residential street of course we've got parked cars on both sides and we're going downhill we've got a few side roads there which have quite poor visibility as you come to the end of them so you can see the pupil keeping his speed quite low but he's still making progress as we go down that road and this is quite a comfortable speed for a road like this at the end of the road you can see the warning for the speed ramp and we'll be turning right we want to make sure that as we get to the end of the road we're giving ourselves plenty of time to see what's coming we don't want to come down too quickly assuming all oh, the left's clear because i can see that the right's not because we can't see you've got to make sure you can see a clear path before you cross that line so make sure your intention is to stop at the line until you find a safe gap rather than to stop at the line if you can't find a safe gap think of it in a defensive way rather than an assertive way once you get there of course keep checking the sides and when you find a gap don't hesitate get on that gas and get out there looking up at where you want the car to go because that's going to help you line up the car much more effectively note the advisory there for 20 the lights weren't flashing so that means the schools aren't coming in or out at this time this means that legally you can still do 30 mile an hour even when they're flashing you legally can do 30 but they're just highlighting the importance of being cautious because that's normally when the schools are going to be in and out when the lights are flashing note the no left turn sign there and the van ahead trying to turn around in the no entry be very mindful of people doing this he could just pull out you can see the learner keeping his speed around 20 we're also taking the next left very tight corner but this one's one way so we should be able to go in with the confidence that nothing will be coming the other way another very very tight street so we want to see lots of mirror use and a low speed as we come through we don't want to be skimming through clipping mirrors or getting too close to things particularly where there's big vehicles like the van on the left that could hide something like a pedestrian who's about to cross the road maybe or workmen in the area so just take your time keep your eyes moving you can even look under the vehicles for feet as you're getting closer to them of course feet are going to have a person attached and as you come to the end of the road you can see the buildings they're very very hard to see so the pupil does a lovely job bringing the car right up to the end so we can see both ways before he starts crossing that giveaway line when he goes getting his speed up nice and swiftly so he's not causing any more problem as well
up ahead we've got a mini roundabout we're going straight ahead so the rules on this of course is give way to traffic from the right if you can see nothing's coming keep moving anything from the road ahead of you unless it's intent on doing a u-turn shouldn't be a problem to you so keep an eye out for indicators you should come in up as well because that will give you a nice early clue as to what cars are doing at the traffic lights we're continuing straight ahead notice the left hand lane is the only one we can use we still want to cover that right hand mirror there just to watch for anyone who might be trying to cheekily slip around you as you go across that junction so even if that lane doesn't come with you keep an eye on it just want to point out as well something to watch out for on the right up ahead you'll see two women stood in the middle of the side road having a conversation they are facing our roads so just be careful that they might be looking to cross when you're coming up to a situation like that they weren't actually showing any intent to cross so the pupil didn't have to really do anything about that but just the awareness of them being there can help you pick up on a potential problem they could cause this is why it's important to keep your eyes moving throughout your drive and this is not just about passing your test this is about afterwards if you're finding that your eyes are fixating on things or you're looking down at the tarmac you're going to miss so much information lift those eyes up and scan around as much as you can apologies about the phone notification there um, up ahead we've got a queue of course this is caused by the crossings up in netherfield you can sit here for several minutes notice how the pupils held back to keep the car park on the left accessible and this is absolutely brilliant planning by this pupil the space allowed there means if anyone does come the other way he's not going to cause an obstruction to them or if someone wants to come out of the car park to turn right and go past us Again, they can just get on with things. If you can avoid blocking a car park, a driveway, or a side road especially, then absolutely do. As we see the queue moving up, the pupil crawls up really nicely, keeping a good following space on the car in front, but also just keeping himself moving as best he can. And remembering when we come up to that crossing, we want to make sure we can get fully across before we enter the crossing area that yellow box or the stop lines where the barriers are so with the slow movers up at front we don't want to roll in right behind this jaguar because if any of them in front of us stop we're going to get stuck on that crossing the pupil does a really nice job just holding back being really cautious as he comes up to the crossing I can't fault him for this. I think an examiner would be quite impressed with the planning, the level of planning that he demonstrates. So you just watch how he handles this crossing by creating more room in front, making sure he's safe before he gets into that yellow box. We're going to be turning left here as well. Just notice the crossing on the left with the scooter going across. So very, very careful as you come into side roads. Always look up into that new road for hazards like that. Because if you come in without looking into that road, say you're looking at the front of the car instead, thinking about your front wheels too much, you're going to miss that old man, which means you're not going to miss that old man. up ahead we're going to continue straight the pupil does get a little bit confused by the sat nav on this one and he does initially go to lean into the left turn but corrects himself then and carries on there was nothing around at this point and if he turned left that wouldn't be an issue in itself even on your test if you go the wrong way it's not a big issue because there was nothing nearby i've advised him just to correct himself and carry on straight so we can carry on down this route um, but it's a case of making sure you're safe before you do that. These bends, again, we're just following the road round very, very tight. So make sure you're looking up out the side windows at the road ahead of you rather than at the front of the car, thinking about where to put those front wheels. Again, here, looking over the left side of the car into that new road, you can see the woman stepping into the road there. She um, doesn't seem to look around at all as we're coming across. The pupil gives her plenty of room. and That's a really good response to a hazard like that. Up ahead, we've got a few parked vehicles. Again, weighing up that space, use those mirrors, adapt your speed, and make sure you're safe to go through those gaps before you fully commit. If you're not sure, 
hold back and let the cars come the other way. I think there was enough room and the people adapted his speed quite well there. He was using his mirrors quite well, just showing that he was aware of how much room he had to. So absolutely perfect. Can't fault him for that. Up ahead, we've got a set of traffic lights, and we're going to be turning right onto the Colic Loop Road. That will bring us back up to the roundabout just outside the test center. So as we approach, you can see the pupil keeping near the line on the right-hand side. His mirrors are covered. His signals come on about now, so nobody thinks he's turning there. And then he slips straight into that filter line right up to the stop line at the traffic lights. These ones are filter controlled, so we're going to get a green arrow and be able to go straight across that junction when the lights change. Even with a situation like that, we should look around still for anything coming through. You never know if there's an ambulance coming from either side unless you're looking for it. You might hear it, but unless you see it, you're not going to be able to deal with it. So keep your eyes moving while you're waiting at the traffic lights and keep them moving as you move through the junction as well. Most of your focus as you go across should be on where you actually want to go. Everything else is just a quick glance around to see if anything's out of place or anything's going to affect you. Notice all the oncoming cars go first, so that reinforces those filter lights. We know they're all going to be stopped before our light goes green, which gives us a clear route across that junction. Notice how the pupil positions in the middle here, the lanes are merging, so it's not such a big deal which lane you take up there as long as you're getting on with things. If you do take up a particular position, just be mindful of the other lane and potentially someone trying to get around you. 40 mile an hour up here too, you can see the pupil making good progress, getting into those mid 30s. And then as we come down to the traffic lights ahead, we're gonna be taking a left turn. Notice the pupil lowering his speed nice and early just to keep himself nice and smooth as he approaches that junction. We don't want to be rushing up and braking late. Looking further ahead and planning for what's up there is going to make the car smooth. It's going to make your responses nice and smooth and controlled. And it's going to demonstrate to the examiner that you're very, very good at planning and awareness. They really like this. They don't like you reacting late and braking heavy to things because that makes them feel uncomfortable. And Let's face it, you'd feel uncomfortable if you're in a car and the driver is accelerating towards the back of a lorry. So early braking, smooth reduction of speed, and that will bring you to a smooth stop. Notice the pupil is leaving a little more room behind this lorry than he has behind cars before. Now, I don't see an issue with this. It's not causing a problem. He could be a little bit closer, but as long as it's not causing a problem and it's not ridiculously far back, you're not going to get a fault on your test for that. Now remember we're taking a left turn here, as we turn there are two lanes, the left lane will allow you to go the first and second exit, the right lane to turn right third exit. So we're going to be going left and that's going to take us into Sainsbury's car park where I then did some bay parking practice with this pupil. So I hope you found this demonstration of that test route useful. If you have please like, share, comment, subscribe and I'll try and keep these videos coming. Thank you ever so much for watching. And God bless.